Cape Horn, Devil's Mouth, Ship Graveyard, Old Ogre. This is what sailors and travelers have been calling Cape Horn for centuries. It is the southernmost headland of the Tierra del Fuego archipelago. It isn't just a point on the map, it's a very unusual and legendary place steeped in maritime history and legends. This place has the worst climate. The temperature fluctuates from negative 2 to plus 14 degrees Celsius, and it never gets warmer. Its main characteristic is the almost never-changing weather. It rains and strong winds blow here for 300 days a year. It's this wind that is the source of all the treacherousness and inhospitality of Cape Horn. The thing is, this wind constantly travels around the world, circling the planet without encountering any obstacles. And then it encounters a narrow passage in its path. That's when the wind goes wild, passing through the confined space. As a result, storms constantly rage near Cape Horn, fogs descend, and the sun barely ever appears there. Thousands of ships have found their final refuge near its gloomy cliffs, while the souls of the crews have turned into albatrosses, according to sailors' beliefs. This place was even discovered in stages by different travelers and researchers. Magellan came close, but didn't quite reach it. Meanwhile, Drake may not have intended to discover the passage, but the wind caught his fleet, sweeping it through the waters. Only Francis Drake's ship reached the open sea. Luck finally smiled on Dutch merchants Jacob Lemaire and Willem Schouten. On January 29, 1616, they anchored at an unknown land and discovered a new island and cape. The explorers circumnavigated the island and named it after their hometown and the burnt ship Hoorn. The discovery of Cape Horn and the Drake Passage marked a new era in the history of navigation. Thousands of ships laden with goods set sail on this new route, battling the elements, sometimes winning, sometimes losing. The flow of ships increased during the heyday of tea clippers. It's been said that a sailing ship could take up to three weeks to pass Cape Horn. Successfully navigating Cape Horn meant recognition of the sailors' skills and respect from their colleagues. There was even a special tradition. After a sailor's first passage around Cape Horn, they were entitled to wear a copper earring. After the second passage, they could wear a silver one, and the third passage earned them the right to a gold earring. This tradition has continued to the present day. Some crews successfully conquered Cape Horn, while others found their final resting place in its restless waters. But legend has it, there's one ship that's doomed to eternal wandering. Captain Vanderdecken failed to circumnavigate Cape Horn and swore to keep trying until the second coming. His reckless wish was granted, and the ship became the legendary Flying Dutchman. Despite the inhospitable climate and remoteness from the mainland, this area has long been inhabited. The island and the surrounding waters were inhabited by primitive people, although during their time this area may have been more favorable for habitation. Charles Darwin traveled on the HMS Beagle, and it was here that he encountered the Yagan people, the true nomads of the sea. They built canoes, sailed in bays, harvested the sea's gifts in icy waters, and caught mammals, birds, and fish. Unfortunately, these remarkable people died out after European missionaries and other well-meaning individuals interfered in their lives. The last woman from this tribe, known as Abuela Rosa, died in the 1980s. Europeans were wary of settling on the actual Cape, but they established several settlements on the archipelago's islands. Today, Cape Horn is inhabited by a few people who maintain the famous Chilean lighthouse. There's also an inhabited naval base nearby. It belongs to the Republic of Chile. In memory of the captains and sailors who perished near these inhospitable cliffs, a huge monument in the shape of a soaring albatross was erected at the top of Cape Horn in 1992. The initiative came from the Cape Horn Captain's Brotherhood, founded in 1987. By the way, the first similar community was formed in 1937 and was called the Brotherhood of Masters of Deep Sea Sailing who passed Cape Horn. In 2010, explorer Fyodor Konyakov placed an orthodox cross on Cape Horn. Cape Horn has always posed challenges to navigation. Before the Panama Canal was built, it was the only available transportation route connecting the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Even in our time, ships avoid circumnavigating the dangerous and unpredictable Cape Horn, opting for the calm and safe route 
even though modern maritime practices and shipbuilding techniques allow vessels to navigate even the most challenging waters. Only oversized ships and tankers, whose size and displacement prevent them from using alternative routes, still traverse this thorny path. Today, Cape Horn is only navigated by cruise ships and yachts participating in regattas. They are accompanied by sports and expedition vessels. Large cruise liners also navigate these waters, carrying tourists who adore visiting such intriguing places. Tourists who conquer the most inhospitable cape on the planet receive a corresponding certificate. In 2005, Cape Horn was recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and placed under UNESCO's protection.